Hi everyone. Um, so as promised, I am here for a video on chronic illness and reading and booktube and it's going to be kind of a catch-all health update video on some health issues that I kind of had touched on briefly at the end of, of Vic Victober in a video um, kind of talking about the chronic health issues that I was having. Um, and kind of my journey to diagnosis. And I know there were lots of kind people who commented with they thought um, different things that I should look into. And so um, it's just been a real journey and kind of what I'm doing now to feel better. All of that, why I haven't been doing videos as often. So first I am gonna, um, I will get to the diagnosis, but I wanna go back a long time ago. <laughs> um, to kind of talk about how my symptoms gradually built and built. So I can remember as a child, there being times um, when I would be standing up and um, all of a sudden it would be like instantly, I would get this feeling of kind of this fog around me and um, everything would, I would sound like I was at the end of a tunnel, like everything sounded really far away. I couldn't hear much. And there was this really strong um, ringing in my ears. The only thing that I can compare it to actually is if you've ever heard a boiler, which most people, um, uh, you don't hear your boiler, but I mean an older boiler, like 1950s era and it turning on and kicking on and slowly getting louder and louder. That's what it sounds like. It was like this building white noise. Um, and I would feel so sick, like I was going to pass out and I needed to sit down immediately. Um, and there was one time, um, I was at summer camp and we were waiting in line at like a breakfast assembly and, but breakfast wasn't going to be for like a half hour. Cause we were doing like the, like morning activities and stuff before that. And I told my counselor, I need to sit down. I feel really sick. And I think she just thought I was being a whiny. I think I was maybe like seven at the time. And I think she just thought I was being whiny, um, which children are whiny. So <laughs> I could understand that. And, um, she said, no, you need to, you need to stay standing. And eventually I was sick to my stomach and I had to go to the bathroom. Um, and she did feel really bad then, you know, that she hadn't believed me. Um, and then, um, but it was very sporadic. These times were just instantly, I knew like, I need to sit down right now, or I'm going to be really sick. I'm going to pass out. Um, then, uh, I do remember, you know, a couple times in high school, uh, there was one time we were doing a classroom activity and I just felt so sick and I felt like I needed to sit down and my teacher got really mad. Actually. I think he just thought I was being like a lazy bum and I'm like, no, I feel really sick right now. Um, and um, I think before I thought maybe it was like a low blood pressure thing, which that does happen. Maybe sometimes when you stand up, um, s some people, their blood pressure drops. Uh, and then I remember too, one time in a church service, uh, specifically an Anglican church service where there's lots of sit, uh, standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down. And I almost passed out then. I can remember that. But it was very sporadic. Um you know, I, it, it wasn't regular. It wasn't this thing that was, you know, changing my lifestyle, anything like that. And then fast forward to the first time I was pregnant. When I got to the third trimester, I started to have that feeling and have it very regularly whenever I was standing. And in addition to that, this time I would have this intense feeling of blood pooling in my knees. It was, um, it, it's just so pervasive. It was this real tight, feeling, um, just it kind of hurt. Um, all, it's like bordering between pressure and pain, but very strong. Um, and then whenever I was standing in addition to the blood pulling in my knees, I would have rapid heart rate. Um, and talk to the midwives about it and they thought it was low blood pressure. So I just needed to have more salt in my diet. Um, so, you know, did that. Um, I, I would just feel like, really faint. Um, so after I had, uh, Peter in 2014, then it went away and I didn't feel like that anymore. I, I do remember like occasionally feeling like, Oh, I'm really tired, you know, of standing for this long, but it was nothing pervasive. Um, then fast forward to 2017 when I was pregnant with Arthur and this feeling came back and it came back 
with a vengeance. Um, second trimester, third trimester. In addition to that, these really intense um, blood sugar plummets. Uh, I would be shaky if I didn't eat like every hour and a half. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, rapid heart rate, such intense fatigue, like I never had in my life. Um, and then, uh, in addition to that, um, I would have these really intense hot flashes. Like I couldn't get cooled off, um, no matter what I did. Um, and I would, I would drink and drink and drink water and not feel hydrated. Um, so all of that happened and I thought, I kind of thought, I guess this is just how I feel while I'm pregnant. Like I've never heard anyone say, I felt amazing while I was pregnant. I just loved every second of it. You never hear anyone say that. So I'm like, pregnancy is just really hard on my body. Um, so I had Arthur in January of 2018. Um, and at first I did feel better, although I did still feel um, shaky in the mornings, which I did neglect to say that before. It was especially um, when I was pregnant, the mornings would be really rough. I'd be really slow starting. It would take me a couple hours just to feel like I was uh, stable enough to get out of the house. Uh, so then starting in June uh, of last year, I started to have just these really intense, inexplicable fatigue days, just like, boy, I'm so tired. Why am I so tired? And, um, you know, when I, when different people hear that, that I'm fatigued, they say, well, you know, that's just, you're a young mom, which is incredibly insulting that I can't tell the difference between a day when I'm really tired after playing with and taking care of my kids and a day where I feel like I have the flu, I'm that tired. It's incredibly insulting that you would act like I didn't know my own symptoms. So uh, then starting in July, it was every single day I felt like this. So heart racing while I'm standing, blood pulling in my knees, <clears throat> um, incredible, incredible fatigue, feeling of faintness, um, especially shaking in the mornings, um, hot flashes, um, and then also some GI symptoms that I had. Um, so that then became my journey of going to see doctor after doctor after doctor. Um, and one doctor uh, who shall rename, rename nameless uh, looked at the blood pooling in my knees um, or looked at my knees after I said I have blood pooling and said they look fine. Uh, I told an acupuncturist, this is what kills me, okay? I went to like standard doctors. So then I tried other things. I went to an acupuncturist and a DO, uh, which is a doctor of osteopathy for those who aren't American. I'm not sure what it would be called in other countries. But, um, and so these people are not standard run of the mill. They're like holistic health. And I told both of them, I saw them within um, two days of each other about the feeling of blood pulling in my knees. And they said, you need to go see a cardiologist. That's all, all I had to do was say my symptom and they believed me. So it took nine, uh, nine months and 10 doctors. And I finally got my diagnosis. So I will write it down here because it's very long, but it's postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or abbreviated it is POTS um, and there are actually two booktubers who have POTS I have found out through my different research one is Winx of Winx and Ink uh, she recently did a vlog talking about eating uh, drinking celery juice every morning which is um, on trend right now it's supposed to be it's like a holistic type thing you can do for your health so I will link Winx's video Wings has a lot of chronic illness issues. Um, so she's spoken about that in some of her videos. Um, and then the other booktuber who's not active currently is Amy Jane Smith. Um, and her POTS case was actually a lot more severe than mine is, um, or her POTS case is. Uh, so that's one thing when you're researching going down the rabbit hole after you get a diagnosis, it's um, really puts things in perspective. So even though I have this feeling like I'm going to faint, feeling of faintness, I don't actually pass out. There's only been um, one time and it was years ago that I passed out. Um, and the other times it's just fixed when I sit down. Um, so I'm really thankful for that. Amy's um, case, she, she was passing out like multiple times a week. Um, so more intense than mine. So that is one thing that's good to know that. 
Uh, so I got diagnosed by a cardiologist and it's just a clinical diagnosis where, um, you know, they, they looked at the demographic that I was a woman in childbearing years. That's a really common demographic for POTS. Um, he had me stand up and after a minute, um, he took my heart rate sitting down and then he took my heart rate after like a minute of standing up and it had raised at least 30 beats per minute. Um, and so then just with my other symptoms, he realized that it was POTS. Um, so it's been, uh, a lot to process that I have this because there's not an official cure. This is about as annoying to find out that you have as an autoimmune disease. I did think before maybe, um, a couple different autoimmune diseases. I wondered if those were what I had. Um, but, uh, it's, it's about as annoying as an autoimmune because autoimmune, they're like, do these different things with your lifestyle and diet and hopefully you'll feel better. And this is kind of similar, not as much with diet. Um, so uh, a couple things you can do are drinking tons and tons and tons of water um, and increasing your salt intake because one problem with POTS is that you have trouble retaining hydration. So actually salt helps you retain that hydration better. But it's an autonomic disorder. So the things that your body does automatically, kind of this um, stabilizing uh, stabilizing you when you go from sitting to standing is something that POTS patients, you know, their body has trouble doing that. Um, the feeling of faintness comes with that. Um, heart rate is something, you know, that your heart rate is not always well managed. Um, and like I said, how sometimes I'll have really intense body temperatures, either very, uh, very hot, but sometimes it'll be just very cold and like I can't warm up. Um, yes. So all of these fun symptoms. So it's been <laughs> quite the time taking care of two small children and trying to manage POTS. Um, and uh, you know, people say, you know, it's really hard, you know, taking care of the two boys and it is hard. But then on the flip side, I wonder if I would have been bedridden if I didn't have them because I have to get out of bed every day. Like there's not a choice um, and it's really hard. But um, from what I've read about deconditioning, um, which is basically where your muscles just get weaker and weaker, the less active you are, um, it seems like hopefully I'll have less of an uphill battle. Um, I don't know. So, uh, the main way that people see results with POTS is through an exercise program, which was pretty much the last thing in the whole entire world. Um, when the cardiologist told me that it's the last thing in the world, I feel like doing now, buddy, like I've been fatigued out of my mind. You know, he's telling me this in March, been fatigued out of my mind since July of last year. So I started the exercise program. I have an exercise bike um, and uh, it's cardio three days a week. So I'm on the exercise bike. I figured I didn't, well, one, gym memberships are expensive, but two, just getting out of the house to go to the gym every day um, or is just not appealing. Um, and I don't know if I would be successful. So the exercise bike is here. I've been watching Mary Tyler Moore while I bike and it's wonderful. And then weightlifting two days a week and that's not nearly as rigorous. So they gave me the whole, this is like um, one of the big Philadelphia hospitals. They have a POTS exercise program that's designed. And so it starts out where you're doing like three minutes base pace, which they want your heart rate to be 125 to 145. Um, and then you recover for two minutes and then three minutes base pace. So um, this graded exercise program. And so um, as of next week, I'll be doing 10 minutes base pace. So we're gonna see how that goes. I am not sure, um, but the other, side effect of doing this exercise program is it makes you even more tired at first. <laughs> so that is why I have not been doing videos because even though I was extremely tired before that, um, <clears throat> then to be even more tired, uh, is just really overwhelming. So I'm, I don't know what else to do. I'm doing the exercise program and I'm just having good faith that I'm going to get some results. And now in the sixth week of the exercise program, as of tonight, um, after I exercise, I will have completed six weeks of it. Um, I am starting to take note of the days that I have good energy. 
Um, cause I want to, I think it's going to be from people who have pots that I've spoken with. It seems to be really, you make very slow progress. It's not going to be something overnight. Um, so in this month I did put a flower on the days that I had good energy. Um, and so today actually this Friday we'll get a flower. That's why I'm filming the video. Today has been a good energy day. Um, but the fact that I had three good energy days um, in a row last weekend is huge. And I need to not forget that because Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were all really bad, like felt like I had the flu. Um, but then today is good. So I just I think I need to focus on the days that have good energy and be excited about that and not be quite as bummed out on the days that I don't have energy. So focus on the good and hopefully I'll start to see a pattern of more good energy. Um, everybody's case is so unique. So we'll see how it goes for me. Um, yeah, I'm just hoping, I don't know what else to do. So I'm just going to do the exercise program. I'm going to do the thing. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, so then I want to talk about how it has affected my reading and being a booktuber. And I think you can tell how it's affected my being a booktuber. Um, I have missed filming. I have missed making videos. I had a list like 10 videos long of videos that I was going to film, but basically, um, in February, when we started to realize it was heart issues, I was just like, this is really, it's going to take a while to figure this out. And then when I got the POTS diagnosis, I kept thinking like I was going to find out what the problem was and they were going to give me a pill that would fix it. Um, and then I'll make videos. And then I realized, oh no, there's not like a magic pill that fixes it. Um, so <laughs> that's why I have been making videos. It's not for a lack of wanting to. And you know, there'll be certain low energy days where I'll have this random burst of energy. And I think, oh, I'm going to make a video. Today's the day. And then by the time the boys are uh, up for rest time and I have everything set up, I'm just too tired to film. So Today was a success. I was able to sit down in front of the phone. It was charged um, and to talk to all of you lovely people. So it's not for a lack of wanting to make videos. So hopefully I'll just have more and more of these good energy days um, and I can be filming more because now I have, I didn't do a February wrap up, obviously didn't do a March one and haven't done an April one. So I think I'm going to try to do a big whopping three month wrap up video. A couple years ago, Hillary from Your Robot Friend, um, she wrapped up, I think like 30 books in 15 minutes, something like that. So I would love, I think I'll do something like that. I'll just wait for the next good energy day and do that. I have made more progress with my Cinderella Chronicles project, um, but I'm so behind on videos that I feel like that will maybe be second priority because I wanna, I know not as many people like to watch those videos and so, um, I feel like maybe wrapping up my books will be first priority. Um, so yeah, that's where I am. <laughs> it's like 80% of the days seem to be really, really tired. <laughs> and just to get through the day, to take care of the boys, that's, that's the goal. Um, as far as it's affected my reading, um, it has in a couple ways. One, it hasn't taken away my love of reading. And if anything, reading has been more of a consolation. I do find though on some days when I'm so tired, like feel like I have the flu, I'm just, I'm too tired to even read. It's like, I can't even bring myself to read. Sometimes I can do an audiobook, but it does bum me out when I'll have these very specific reading plans for a week. And then I'll have, you know, boom, 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 several tired days in a row. And I just get way off track. It's also affected how I buddy read. I need to commit to less buddy reads because I keep being the worst buddy reader and being perpetually behind and, it just, it really bums me out. So I think at most I should do, you know, one buddy read at a time. I booked myself for three buddy reads in a week last week and shocker, I was behind on all of them. Um, so yes. Uh, and yeah, so sometimes, you know, even if it is a good energy day, those are so rare. I'll use up my energy, um, on something around the house or, um, you know, something besides filming a booktube video. So, I do love booktube. I've still been watching and enjoying, um, just, I don't have, um, 
my life is different now. My life looks different. Um, so of course I'm already thinking about Victober and how I want to have so many cool videos up for that. And I'm like, I hope I'm doing a lot better by Victober. So maybe it's a good thing. You know, I started my exercise program all the way in February. Um, and we'll see, you know, how, how I'm doing by, by Victober, hopefully a lot better. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, I really, uh, want to do more videos. So we'll see what happens, but this is an update, uh, to let you know where I am. Um, yeah, I don't think I have much else to say, but I'm looking forward to seeing your lovely comments. Um, and I will see you guys for another video. I don't know when, but this is not the end of Kate House booktube channel. Um, it's just, it's different this year. Um, so yeah, I think I'll continue to be faithful with my uh, Betsy Tacey 2019 videos once a month reviewing the next in the Betsy Tacey series. And um, yeah, hopefully doing more videos as I am hopefully going to be feeling better slowly but surely. Uh, so yeah, if there are any of you subscribers out there who have chronic health issues, my heart goes out to you. Um, it's just really quite a thing to go through just your life every day. Um, doing something, uh, doing the mundane everyday tasks, you know, each task you get done is a victory. Um, anytime I get out of the house with the boys, I just feel like I deserve a trophy, you know, getting out of the house. So I'm there with you. If you want to message about it, um, Instagram is a great way to contact me or email about it. I'm there for you. Any subscribers with pots, <laughs> I'm happy to talk. Um, so yeah, Thanks for watching guys and I will be back with a video hopefully sooner rather than later.